Hi, my name is Avril Sorter and welcome back to conducting Cisco Unified Wireless Site Survey. In this lesson, we're going to talk about how you can prepare yourself to actually taking the certification exam. So what we're going to do in this lesson is we're going to take a quick overview of the exam itself, then talk about the exam topics that Cisco publish, then we'll talk about some thoughts on how to study for the certification exam, and then we'll close on some exam preparation techniques. Now, of course, the title of the exam is Conducting Cisco Unified Wireless Site Survey, and this is version two. So the exams were updated in 2012. The examination code is 642732. And you can expect to find somewhere between 50 and 60 questions. The Cisco website says that you have 90 minutes to take the exam. Now the passing score is not published. And the reason is, is that Cisco use a set of statistical analysis and can potentially change that at a future date. However, when you've taken the exam, you will receive a report that shows what your score is, and it will show the score by various subject areas, which we're going to talk about in a moment. And so that gives you an indication of where you've answered your questions correctly or potentially where you've had some problems. So the Conducting Cisco Unified Wireless Site Survey is one of four exams that can be taken underneath the CCNP wireless certification. Now Cisco state that to take the CCNP, there's an expectation that the individual should have between three to five years of on the job experience in wireless network engineering and a really thorough understanding of some of the wireless networking principles. So what Cisco is looking for is to take that knowledge of wireless networks and then translate them into meeting business requirements. And so what they're actually testing for on this exam is your ability to plan and conduct a wireless site survey to design the RF network and then to conduct a post-installation assessment to ensure compliancy to various rules and regulations that we've discussed throughout this course. So Cisco publish a spreadsheet that shows the kind of topics and the areas that they're expecting you to have knowledge on in order to pass this certification exam. And they fall into these five areas that I'm going to take you through on the next five slides. This first area is preparing for the site survey. When preparing for the site survey, Cisco talk about eight different things that you should be knowledgeable on, starting with identifying your customer requirements. So this would be, for instance, are they looking to make voice calls over the wireless LAN? Are they looking to locate devices? Then to identify the customer facility requirements. So, you know, are they deploying in a warehouse, a hospital, a enterprise office environment, are there single floors, multi floors, etc. What type of devices does the client have? Do they have IP phones, tablets, barcode readers? Also, what are some of the regulatory issues that apply to this specific site? For instance, if you were operating in the US versus Europe. You should feel comfortable with the safety and aesthetic considerations that you might run into and underneath that, some of the regulations. So for instance, OSHA, various fire codes or electrical codes. You should be able to assess existing network infrastructure. You know, what switches currently exist? Are there any existing wireless LANs that are already deployed? You should be thinking about the logistical considerations when you're planning your site survey. 
what is the time of the site survey, do you have access, etc. And one of the things that was revised in this exam going forward is it's really incorporated many of the capabilities of 802.11n and the impact that has on the network infrastructure. The second area that we're looking at is plan for the site survey. So you've prepared to do the site survey, now you need to plan for the site survey. So how do you select the proper survey model? And we went through the different survey models, data, voice, location, mesh, etc. Determine the proper deployment characteristics, i.e. is it a very dense deployment, a lot of uses with high data rates in very confined spaces, or is it highly mobile, a lot of people moving around? Is it indoors, outdoors, etc.? Selecting your survey equipment, how are you actually going to conduct the survey? What do you need to take with you? What are some of the best practices when you're operating in a customer environment? And also, what is the impact of different material to the signal attenuation? So the more walls, the more obstacles that you have, your signal will attenuate more. So understanding that is also part of how you're going to prepare for the site survey. You also need to be very comfortable with the kind of documentation needed that you'll be providing in your final customer reports. The third area then is to conduct the site survey. And we've discussed a layer one and a layer two site survey. So a layer one, when you're looking at the RF environment and sources of interference and finding the best channel to deploy on. And part of that is using the Cisco Spectrum Expert tool. Selecting the proper antenna to actually conduct the site survey and then coming potentially back or even doing at the same time the layer two site survey when you're actually looking to place access points and not only for the indoor environment but for an outdoor environment as well. So you might be doing a point to point connection or you might be doing a point to multi point connection. And you should also have some familiarity with the outdoor mesh networking capabilities as well. Having done your site survey, you have to actually design the RF network. So what Cisco has on its syllabus is you need to determine the infrastructure requirements. So those would be things like your switches and your power over Ethernet, your mobility appliances, your wireless LAN controllers. So what are those infrastructure requirements? you need to be able to determine the AP count and the number of controllers that you need and the licensing requirements for those controllers. Very important that you're able to generate the wireless LAN documentation and that might be for an indoor and outdoor environment but you should feel comfortable and Cisco expects you to be familiar with how to create those design documents which then someone's actually going to go away and actually implement your recommendations. And the fifth area. And the fifth area then is once the wireless LAN has been deployed, your recommendations have been followed, is to conduct the post deployment assessment. To verify the RF coverage is what you were expecting whether you need to make any changes to meet the customer's requirements. Make sure that your customer applications are working and performing satisfactorily. And here you'd be expected, you know, to understand the WCS tools, so the wireless communication systems tools like voice readiness, location readiness, site calibration, etc. If there are any deployment issues, What's causing them and how do you reconcile those issues? And finally, how do you actually put together your installation report and deliver that to your customer? And what is contained in there? So those are the areas that Cisco list for you to have 
competency in and are the potential areas that you're going to find questions on. Now, you should be aware that Cisco does expect you to have experience, so you should not be surprised to see some questions on the test that may not be directly in those areas. And again, keep an eye on those areas because Cisco could update them as well. So let's now look at some study recommendations. And studying techniques are very individualized. There are some good practices that most people can follow, but largely study is all about how do you like to learn? What is the best way for you to learn? And really try to understand that and then exploit it. A few techniques which I'd really strongly recommend that you do is please review all of the lessons in this course. Do not assume, oh, well, I really understand this area, so I don't need to look at this lesson. Um, there are several things that I try to point out as I'm going through the lessons that not only will prepare you to take the exam, but help you do the job as well. So some real life experiences, some things that will help you relate to it and the things that you need to know in order to pass the certification. Practice. You need to be out there. Cisco's expecting you to have several years of experience doing site surveys. That's not to say that you can't just sit the exam without that experience, but if you don't have that experience, it's not very intuitive what some of the questions at Cisco are asking, what is behind those questions, what is Cisco really looking for. So get out and practice doing site surveys and use the Cisco site survey tools, the Cisco Spectrum Expert tool. Use the wireless communication system, the WCS tools. If you can, use the air magnet and other tools that are out in the market so you really understand what tools are best used for planning the site survey, which ones are best when you're conducting the site survey, and which ones can really help you wrap up and validate the customer requirements have been met. And look at the tools.